Hello again guys, welcome back to another episode of Queensland Abandoned Mines, Ebenezer with you and welcome uh, back to the channel or if you're just joining us for the first time, this is a channel that's dedicated to Queensland uh, and actually now for the most part the wider of Australia, mining history where we do a little bit of a research piece for you in terms of a bit of the story that the miners left behind and then we uh, intersplice that with a thorough exploration and a survey of what's left of the mine workings. Now on this particular trip we weren't even meant to be exploring abandoned mines or looking for any of the old town sites. We were actually just there for a two-day prospecting adventure. Uh, you can probably tell that it's maybe best uh, for at least me to stick with uh, mine exploring because when it comes to uh, prospecting, well actually we don't know what we got yet. We will uh, produce another little video because we've got some concentrates. Uh, and some hard rock that we've got to crush down and uh, pan out to see actually what we won in terms of gold for the weekend. Wouldn't keep your fingers crossed though. Uh, my estimates would be it'd be less than one to two grams at best. Now on day two, we decided to head up into the mountains into the state park and hunt for a long lost mine. And the main mission that we had was actually to summon a mountain with the help of a fire trail that sort of cut through the state park. Once we hit, I think around about 550 meters of altitude, we had to jump off the side of the hill and look for the northern workings. Uh, you'll have to wait to see how that panned out. And we had some GPS problems, and then we also had uh, some pretty severe problems with some of the local flora. We accidentally walked through a plant called a Gimpy Gimpy. Now, a few of our followers actually sent us a few articles on these since, because we posted a few photos on Instagram of it. There is some pretty insane stories of uh, this plant and uh, actually leading to some people to kill themselves. There's a documented story of a pilot that jumped out and landed in a valley just absolutely full of these plants. And because of the extremely painful bite that left the pilot in uh, writhing pain, I think for a number of days, they decided that it was uh, too much to take and took their own life. Now I only just brushed past one of these plants and uh, sort of stung me on the left hand and I could definitely feel its effects all the way down to the outside of my elbow. So if there wasn't already enough in the Australian bush that's trying to kill you, we'll just add plants to the list. And it's the first time we've encountered these plants of all of our years of mine exploring. As far as the mine goes, guys, you'll have to wait and see what we find, but uh, it's definitely in our top five explores ever. It's uh, very old, it's completely intact, extremely well preserved, beautiful old gold mine. Now this gold mine, they pulled out almost a thousand tons of rock and it was first worked in uh, 1911 and the uh, last lease uh, lapsed around about 1946. And you're also going to see the remnants of the most intact 10 head stamper we have ever found in Australia at any of the historical gold mine sites. Now we'll pause the video when we get to the stamper a little bit later and give you a bit of history on that. But uh, yeah, you'll look forward to seeing that if you like this channel. It's an absolute ripper. So apologies uh, for the long intro and we hope everyone is really well and uh, sit back and enjoy tonight's episode. All right, we've made it guys. Two day uh, prospecting adventure. This is where I parked. This is where Blake parked. <laughs> What's going on here, lads? Just collecting some firewood. <laughs> yeah, what well, happened, we're mate? We're exploring for a place close to the creek and we took an adventurous track. All right, and, and how good was the actual camp spot itself? Where was it, mate? The potential was pretty low. What did we got <laughs> And how's the, how's the campsite we found? Excellent. Yeah, did it come with a free raft? And a towel. <laughs> you, can, you can swing now because now the back wheel's going to miss it. Yeah, so swing hard now. Full lock, full lock. Real slow, real slow. Stop, stop. Radiator. Oh. Uh, rocks under the front wheel. You're clear, you're fully clear, yeah. <laughs> Alright, follow me, hey? This one's a bit of a better one. <laughs> well, here's the boat, mate. We've got a free boat. And here we go, guys. Crossing the creek, got the campsite up there. Blake's got the little uh, river sluice down there. 
and across the river and uh, go to a bit of a secret spot and look for some gold. <laughs> well, I've, I've definitely gone the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I've still got my mic on my boat GoPro guys, so if I fall in... Uh. Alright, made it across. Alright, so we're going to continue on our barefoot walk. John's found a raft, it's an Explorer 200, River Cat. We've challenged him to go through the rapids and meet us down at the uh, river confluence. Yeah. <laughs> I was eyeing off those $10 thongs. Did you see him? Yep. Oh, it looks easier than the last one. The question is, which one has the gold in it? Further up. Maybe we can put it in up there with that little white rack it is. And then John can just put it in the seal. Well, the I can, I'll still shovel that gravel, surely. Alright, we'll get the sluice set up. Nothing in there. So we'll just clean out a crevice. It's uh, very, very light. That's where John's just cleaned out. Another one. Yeah, I'm trying to get right up against the back of that rock there. Oh, that's a good one. Nice and deep, Yeah, there's no black sands or anything, is there? No. Oh, there's a little bit coming out now. Should have hang a little swirl, should hang around the top. No, nothing there. Yeah, right, it's got the sluice going. Buggy iron stained quartz. More. Where are you digging? Straight down. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Get it. And yes, guys, we will collapse this bank and fill it back in. Oh, 
Hi. Thank you. Lots on it. Just need my finger now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's another tiny one somewhere else hidden still. But very light. Yeah. And uh, wouldn't be surprised if we even blow them out of water here. Yeah, yeah. He's retrieved it. Good bit of recycling, John. <laughs> oh, where's your phone? Where's your phone? Phone? Yeah. Oh, mate. I got that on video too. Oh, no. Good morning, all. So, after last night's uh, torturous run in the creeks, we've decided to go look for a mine. So, we've got the tonnage for all of the mines that are out this way. And this one that we're walking to, the lower at it, it's got almost a thousand tons of ore removed, which is close to twice of what any other mine's got. It's got a tiny little upper at it, an eastern at it, and should have a big long lower drive that's about 170 meters long. Whew. But we just picked a really hot day to do it. Here we see the quartz and uh, in the sandstone country rock. Quartz here, nice. sandstone country rock. Yeah, so that got to 0.6 of a metre in the mine we're going to. What are all these little things? Oh, they would just been fractures in the sandstone. You know. yep. it's, it's obviously, it's all been crushed a little bit, which is a good, it's a good sign usually when it's crushed and the quartz is wriggly, is better than when it's just straight. Cool, all right. All right, guys, we are remote now. About another 10, 15 metres down there should be the northern workings. 460, yeah, 460, 480. Hopefully we'll find the northern adit down there and by rights it should run all the way down to the southern adit, the little trenches and everything down there. And the southern adit or the lower adit, see they're 170 metres, but Blake does have a theory it's 1,300 metres. <laughs> oh guys, this is insane. Because we're on a south facing hill and the GPS antennas are up behind us, the GPS satellites, even though my watch uses uh, GLONASS. I don't have the GPS pins located on my watch, only my phone. My phone's got pretty basic uh, GPS, so it can't actually pinpoint where we are on the hill. It can only pick where we are longitudinally. Whew. How are you holding up? Yeah, doing all right. A bit sweaty. A bit sweaty. How's the water rationing going? Not good. Not good? Not good. What are you down to? Uh, camel levels. Oh, really? Yep. There we ah, 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 ah. Check, check yourself, see if you're covering me dance too. Oh, really? oh, 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 those really sting. That's bad. Oh. Where's the sting goes, mate? Hey? Where's the sting goes? Uh, <laughs> this is rough going. There's the guys down there. The creek pit is just down there below my fingers. I've just stopped in a spot where there is no ants. But these are like really painful biting fire ants. So I've got to put the camera away and do it with the bolt, otherwise they seem to catch up to you. Right, we've just come down there. I might show you just a portion of the GPS track. That took us over an hour. Blake's got attacked by a fire ant. And man, oh man. Probably a bull ant, I would say. Look at this thing. I can't focus on it. Oh, the macro on this video is terrible. Looks like a big old water tank, riveted together. What year, what year do you reckon that is? 1780? 1780. <laughs> reckon that's uh, that looks like part of the steamworks, doesn't it? No, it's an old chimney, I think. It's uh, wrapped, wrapped steel. Oh, wow. You see that huge cog up there? Can't Big imagine camera. packing that in. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's interesting. It's got two, maybe that went on the top of the boiler. What do you reckon? Riveted? Yep. There is. So how do you reckon they carted this through here? Oh, it looks like it's almost all steel construction too. Yeah. How many tons do you reckon that weighs? Well I think um, one shoe and one stamp, I think half a ton. Wow, it must yeah. have run some dirt through here. Yeah. Uh. Okay, how many heads is that? One. Two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten heads. Still got the shoes on it. Wow, we. Do you think that pipe behind it's dumped, or do you think that's part of it? Oh, the timber's still there. Look, that's awesome. This is one of the most intact stamp mills we've ever seen, guys. So when did this place? Pre World War One. Uh, no, this actually wasn't super early. I think. This All right, guys. Now, as promised in the intro, check this out. This is one of the most intact and most beautiful ten head stamps we have ever seen. Engineered by David Munro, a Scot that uh, emigrated to Victoria uh, sometime in the mid 1800s, uh, son of uh, famous uh, blacksmith John Munro. Now, the Munros at around about 1850, mid 1850s, actually banded together and won the government contract for the Mirable Viaduct. I'll chuck a photo up of that. I believe that was actually a railway service that uh, serviced the Ballarat mines. Now, David Munro and co were uh, engineers and fabricators that worked out of Victoria until around about the uh, Mid to late 1880s, then I believe uh, David Munro diversified and uh, sort of changed his portfolio and wasn't really um, fabricating this kind of equipment. Now, that would place this 10 head stamper around about the uh, mid 1880s. Now, we know that it wasn't an operational mine. Uh, this mine was not mined until about 30 years later. We believe this 10 head stamp was actually disassembled, uh, put on the back of horse and cart, or some mules, or some bullocks, and this was transported from another historic mine in the area that was worked around about the 1890s. So I really wanted to pause the video, guys, and just share these photos with you. What an absolute beauty, and we enjoy seeing these things and discovering these things just as much, if not more, as the mines themselves. Don't usually find them left like this, do we? No. They're all, all the timber ones have been eaten by ants. So there's nothing left by the time we get here, but this is, it's all cast, like the inside of a piano or something. Manufactured by David Munro. This is Australia, Australia. There, and there. Oh. Look how mineralized the dirt is underneath it. John should come and detect under here. There's almost a mine shaft under that one. What size is that, guys? And they would have had an amalgam table that would have come off here, or a shaker table. If they had an amalgam table, they would have had the, um, the mercury would have bonded with the gold, but then they'd have to fire the amalgam to recover their mer uh, mercury and melt down their gold. Well, when you've explored as many mines as we have, things get a bit easier. The mill's down there. That's a beautiful old stamper. One of the best. The mullocks here. There's no switchbacks here, but they wouldn't have uh, they wouldn't have wanted to truck the uh, ore up to the stamper. Then the mullock finishes here, and it just goes back to just normal burden. It's been somewhere right here, and I've already stuck my head in. Looks like there's a shadow. Should be the adit. <laughs> hey guys, you got to check out this adit. It's spectacular. We have found the spectacular at it. Oh, smell like bats. Hey guys, we got airflow out of it. All right, wait for the guys. We've got airflow out of here, guys, so it's going to at least load to a shaft or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> Arch cut. Yeah, what do you think of that one, mate? Excellent. Just uh, tell me, go to, go to the portal. Tell me what you think of that airflow. Oh, I can see right here. Yep. Yep, all right, here we go. Needed to put my wind filter on. Oh, Blake, it's timbered. <laughs> it's timbered. I've got to wait for you on this one, mate. Come have a look. What have we got? A little bat cave? Oh, it's, it's uh, <laughs> oval. <laughs> Ooh, I smell bats. Yeah, I know. I know. Mm. Wow. Yeah. This is carved into the sandstone, isn't it? Yeah. Feels strong breeze. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> How old are those timbers? Uh, I don't think this one's super early. They don't seem like this very often, do we? Nope. Let's pop in. Yeah, for sure. All right. Let's find out where that breeze is coming from. You feel that? Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Air conditioning. Oh, wow. It's vaulted. It's not, a, it's not an egg shape. It's like a church window. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Here's the come to Jesus moment, huh? <laughs> wow. Oh, so it looks like the texture of the rocks changed. It sort of doesn't look like they were blasting out, does it? It looks like they were smashing it with hammers or something. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Have you been in an arch shaped at it before? Um, 
No, I think the only other one that I've been in is at uh, Valhalla. Wow. Yeah, it's very fractured. I'll just let you know, I've got a fault to see at a meter, so. Oh, there's so much air coming through. Wow, look at these timbers. A little bit rotten. Some rocks are falling down. Some rang wall. Wow, oh. it goes back. Oh, oh. Down right there. Yeah. Seems like that's a tendency to fall off as locks. Watch to your right, John. Yep. Above my head now, just be careful. So maybe the report I looked at is 930s, maybe this is a lot older. Yeah. That stamper looks pre-1900s, doesn't it? Like Roman age. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Look at that. Oh. Rail tie and one of the nails is still sticking out. Look at that. That's really cool. That would have been nailed into the side of the track. Can you see where the track, yeah, look. You can, see the, you can see the little groove where the track was. I know I just made that with my finger, but you can see just through there. That's cool. Where do you think the main one is? Just uh, they said it's just quartz in. Yeah. I don't think we're in the vein yet. They haven't left anything behind. That's no. Unless it was um, walking through it. <laughs> it's all gone. Yeah, it's all gone. Yeah, but you can't see it in the back. Oh, wow. Watch out for laggy on your left, John. That's a sleeper. I think it's a wooden, a wooden tramway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, is that the is that the tie to your left? We've got, we've got one to our right. It's made metal. Yeah. I think we've got a wooden, yeah, wooden rail there. No way. Yeah. With it, with they just would have put strap on top or not even. It's not just metal or wood. I think it's, I think it's just they just use wood. Is this back? Did you get the back? No. Oh, where's his face? Oh, there he is. That's his little face. Hey, buddy. Remember, guys, every cent, I'm blasting with a torch, every cent of profit that the page makes, which now is about $70. <laughs> um, we just got to find a way to withdraw that money, but that would be going to back conservation in Queensland. Pirates, I think. Oh, sulfur. Yeah, yeah yellow rich, sulfur. Rich yeah. sulfur van. I've used it to radius around the corner here because the uh, wooden train tracks don't go uh, curved around corners on trees. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, look for the little um, oiling sticks too. Whenever there's a corner, sometimes you'll find little oiling sticks. See these sticks here? Do you yeah. see something with a rag tied around the end of it? <laughs> I've begun improvising at some point. Yeah. <laughs> the further they got in, the lazier they got. What's this little guy? Whoa. What? Oh, look at that. Quartzman here now. Yes, okay, so there they've cross cut, they've driven in until they've found the quartz vein. So there, that's not in the sandstone, that's that slate stuff that was um, outcropping. Yeah, it looks like it's metamorphosed. Yeah. So right there, guys, that would be almost half a metre, and this bellied to um, 0.6 of a metre. So, oh, wow. Wow. Well, that's back there. Yeah, all right. Your bat backs, aren't you? Look at that hang wall. John's not. That's it. You're going to have the radio back soon. Wait, guys, this is where the air's coming from. Holy shit. Sorry? Holy shit. That's like a <laughs> phrase. No. That's big. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And look at the vein going all the way up it. I'll show you guys. There's some up there too. There's some. Oh, there. Oh, Maybe. That's awesome. Long way back to get the rope. Ah, I just had a bat on my back. All right, so we got, I'm turning my air meter back on. I got no air in here at all. I will say though, I've never seen bats in anything less than about 18. Yep. I got real bad mold in here. Look at the vein in here, guys. Check it out. Walking very slow, guys, with my head down, making sure none of the bats hit the hot parts of my torch. 
I probably am due, hey? Yeah. Shit. Uh, uh, there's a lot of bats, guys. <laughs> Alright. I just got to turn the camera off, guys, so I get past the bats. Look at the timbers up here, guys. Still picking up the rails. This is an awesome mine. This is meant to be a prospecting weekend. Oh, Spion, all the other ladder's been pulled out. Or have they? So get your orientation, guys. Here come the boys. This is a cross cut. The reefs above our head, above these timbers just here. And they've sliced through. They've decided to punch through and follow the continuation of the vein. You can see above the torch. This is a windlass. And uh, another drift down there, guys, it actually looks like it uh, stopes up into the ore body. And then just to get your orientation, oh, this is straight down. Are we on a full floor? No, no, you're right. Um, that's flooded down there anyway. Can you blast your big torch down there, mate? That's a hand, hand hewn ladder. Yeah, and then windless, boys. Hey, can you just hold that? I'll see if it still turns. Hey! She still turns, boys. Look at that. Right. Time to clip in. <laughs> no, the light is finished. Come, come where I am. So, I would, I wouldn't stand there. I'd come right over to your left, guys. The it goes all the way down. No, no. Wow. That's just, that's not a ladder. That's just a thing. It's just a ladder right in front of you. Yeah, but it ends. Come up here. Come stand. Put, put your feet here. Yeah, yeah. Floor, so I yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, this is the stope and the vein. All right, uh, too many bats, guys. There's the vein. So this is the actual where they've come in and dropped it down. You see the vein just there, guys? And they've sunk all the way up above my head. Look at that. All the way through there, the belly's right out there. And you can see maybe the highest grade of the quartz was right up against the uh, hanging wall. And they've just come in here and stoped it. You can see a bit of the vein left down there. Whoa, stop doing that with the torch. <laughs> what are you doing? You knew I was in here. Turn it off, turn it off. Ah! All right, guys, keep your orientation about you. This is into the drive. That's the windlass. That's the boys over there. That there is straight down. How cool is that? So cool. Alright, watch out for that collar boys. I'll be back in a second. Oh, powder room boys. This is all gated, look. This is way older than 1930s. Yes, there's dynamite storage in here. All right, I'll come back across. That was a good one, hey? Did you see the stones down there? There's another one. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's the bottom level. See these timbers here, guys? There's a level that scoops in under my feet. And then down here. And then down there, where those timbers are to the left, that's where the level comes out. And it's flooded that's down there. Yeah, what the f what's that? Oh, what is that? Another one of those mine jellyfish. Uh, I can see it. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Is this what you're looking at? Yep. yep. That thing. Yep. What's that? That's weird. Yeah, spooky. That's really scary down there. It, the workings keep going. Yeah. All right. After you, good sir. Alrighty. So where do you reckon it is? Will you be striking down this way? Well, see this little guy. Dipping down this way, striking that, that little guy's yeah. on the strike, so it should be above your right yeah. shoulder now. Oh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's in the roof here. Oh, wow. 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 Oh, wow.
Yeah, go. Uh, I reckon that's, yep, you can see all the fractured quartz in it. Goes all the, hey, wait a second. Uh, there's timber going all out the side. You're under, I reckon you're under an abandoned ore chute. Well, that's ultra dangerous. <laughs> Look how many timbers are up yeah, there. Yeah, that's sick. Oh, there's stoles all the way up there. Wow. Well. No, I reckon to our right though, you can see where it's broken through. So that's the chute in there. Down the ore chute. And they've just timbered oh, it. Oh yeah, oi, oh, oi. You're right. Look at all the quartz in here. Yeah. That would be their ore. We should get this, some of this for John. Yeah? Yep. That's literally their ore. Look. You want to rattle some of the timbers above your head? So no. You can just <laughs> no, no, I do not. No, it might be full of ore. It could be full of gold above you. All right, well, have you got something to put it in? Not really. Yeah. This is why my phones always get ruined. <laughs> that was my pockets full of... <laughs> <laughs> Quartz. That's cool. So, why have they capped the shaft? That, oh, so, so they must have just been sunken it down to this level and trucking out of this level, but then they've sunk the winds afterwards because they'd always start at the top. That's interesting. Yeah. It's also extremely dangerous. Like the stoke seems to go to the right. Quite yeah. Often. That's cool. All right, after you, good sir. Um, do you want to give me a phone? Because I've got a pocket for your phone, otherwise you're going to ruin another one here. Oh, I'm just going to put my non <coughs> rocks pocket. Doing good with the bats there, mate. <laughs> so that in here, guys, is a chute. The level that we're standing on right here would have been the lowest level of the mine. The ore chute would have come down right here. Look how smooth all these rocks are here. This is where they would have loaded their ore cars and they would have shipped them out along under Blake's feet. But then when they've exhausted and cleaned the reef above us, oh, that's good looking ore. They've needed to chase it further down. All right, guys. All right, guys, you've seen all this. I'll nab some photos on the way back out. We've got a few bats down there. We've got a couple of, holy shit. Whoa. It's a bit easier to see it in the sun. Mm, small, though. There's pretty big shiny bits in there. All righty, gang. That's a wrap. And check out this, guys. Bit of our old uh, steel there left from the formwork. They've uh, created this dam they would have to do in the dry season. Obviously, uh, Mother Nature has forced a way through again. But uh, that's probably 2.8, probably almost three meters high. So the other side of that is where there would have been their dam. They've pushed this all the way into the hill. I thought it was actually an added in there, but it's just uh, the, the bending of the uh, dam wall. And then they would have uh, run their water pipes. And pretty much just above my finger up there is where the stamp mill is. So we had their uh, water lines running up to feed that. Really cool. All right, that's pretty much a wrap, guys. That was one of our uh, most, well, at least one of our top three, maybe top five mines ever. What we love, no footprints, extreme wilderness in remote areas, no vandalism, no spray paint, none of that sort of crap. Uh, old timbers. And the other thing we like about the mines is too, when none of it's collapsed, you can piece it together all of it. So we could actually see that they'd done a cross cut, added in. Then they've driven a drive along the, the quartz reef into an old little powder room. That's where they've sunk that little winds. And then uh, where the uh, vein kept going, they've uh, done a big stoping ore body of the vein all the way up. And we could see that there was two stopes up, one of, uh, actually both of which had been converted into ore chutes. And then we could see another uh, wind sunk down to uh, the sump and the lower workings. Ultra cool. Uh, we got no ropes, but also by climbing that, um, this mine's very historically important. There is a chance that by trying to climb that, we could collapse the collar. So uh, we're not going to try that. We'll leave it as it is. So I think that's a wrap, guys. What an awesome one. I think he's coming down to us. Yeah. <laughs> you got a beer? <laughs> he does. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs>
Alrighty guys, that is a wrap from Queensland Abandoned Mines. And we're not done with this location yet. You guys know on the page we've done some uh, monstrous treks in the past in the uh, pursuit of history and mining history. But uh, this next adventure that we're starting to plan, or at least just make the initial planning uh, stages for, is going to be the mission to end all missions. We are planning a uh, two to two and a half day hike in. Uh, probably a full day to explore the historic mine site that was actually started all the way back in the 1880s and a further two days to uh, venture out. We're gonna be uh, planning to explore one of the most remote and stunning um, historic mine sites in our uh, general area. It will take a fair bit of planning. I think you guys know that we've got our little in-reach satellite phones that will definitely uh, play part of the safety plan. And when we do end up doing it, it'll end up being the third adventure from this uh, general area and rounding out the episodes and all the documentation of the history we've done there. So until then guys, or until the next one, we hope everyone's really well. If you like the channel, make sure you hit subscribe and that means you'll be notified when we air another update. But until then guys, thanks for tuning in and following the adventures today and we'll see you guys on the next one.